Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Balance of power! And boy is it balance. Yeah, uh, uh, but this game should actually be called, um... <laughs> Close up. War of the Hats. <laughs> Come on now, you know that would have been a good name for it. Maybe so. War of the Hats. War of the Hats. This is a uh, a game in the risk genre that takes place in Europe, and you are moving units around, basically trying to capture the most territories, because getting territories gets you points. Sounds familiar? I would wager this game's not like most games that you've played, mm -mm. because it's very balanced. Mm, very balanced. <laughs> Let's take a look. The game takes place on a map of Europe. Each player gets a card which shows which army they're taking or which nation they're taking and in their capital they're going to put three of their units. You have a coin which stands for a banker, then you have one hat, the crown, that stands for the king and another hat that stands for the general. Or it could be Barbie's hair I suppose. Uh, there's no hat for the banker, that's sad. But anyhow, you have those three pieces that start in your capital and then you have one more of each piece and you can start them anywhere you want so you can put two in one territory like the red piece did or all three in one territory or spread them out now what you need to remember is that kings beat bankers bankers beat generals and generals beat kings and that's something I'm sure will mess up at some point but that is what the actual uh, thing is and you you can look here it's basically a paper rock scissors let's see if we can focus up a little bit on there you can see the paper, rock, scissors thing right there. And you're trying to get a certain amount of points to win the game down here, depending on how many players are in the game. And you get points for, uh, you get three points if you control a capital with one of each type in that capital. And you get one point for each other type of unit that you, each other territory that you control. On your turn, you get one action with each of the three types. So I get one king action, one banker action, and one general action. An action can be duplication. Here I can take my general and put another general in that spot. An action can be moving. I can take my banker and move him to another spot. There can even be an enemy in that spot, although there is a hard limit of only three things per territory. Or I can attack somebody. Let's say I had a banker here. I can move in here and attack and kill. I mean a king here. I can move in here and attack the banker here and destroy him. So if all your stuff from one type is destroyed, you can't even... Uh, you can't bring that type back anymore for the rest of the game, so you're down to two types. If you let that happen, though, you deserve to lose. Uh, there is a scoring sheet over here where you can keep track of how many points you have, although this is actually optional. Uh, the regular game has you keeping the points in your head, which is ridiculous. There's no reason to do that. You, want, you need to keep track of them because there's so many pieces on the board. So, once again, your actions are to move, duplicate, or attack if you control every region in your territory. So let's say I'm orange and I control every orange region. And you gotta keep an eye on it because some people have regions all over the board, like England has Gibraltar and this little uh, Malta down here. But uh, if you control all of them, then you have a fourth action. So I can take one king, one general, one banker action, and then one fourth action. And that could be another banker action, another general action, or another one. And you continue this way to get a certain uh, amount of points. This is not about uh, conquering the other nations per se, although obviously uh, conquering them and taking their spots and their lands away from them will take away their fourth action and also get you more points. So you continue till somebody wins. Well, I think the word we were looking for is too. Yeah, well, we don't want to give it away at the beginning. It's too balanced. I'm telling you, when I opened this up and I looked at all those wooden pieces, I said, Wow, this is a game I'm really going to enjoy. Uh, just looked cool. Three different kinds of units, and how do you do it? Oh, this one kills that one. Ooh, rock, paper, scissors mechanic, I thought. That's neat. I like rock, paper, scissors mechanics. The, <laughs> you know? The problem with this is, first of all, thematically, it makes no sense. I, well, I guess someone could argue, well, bankers do 
bring down kings and okay, but tell me why you have thirty two kings on your side marching towards me. Right. I, I just I didn't get that at all. And secondly, it's so slow. Mm. I been working on the railroad, you know. I, I I felt like Sam said it's too balanced. If you bring some some of the kings up, then I'm gonna bring up some of the bankers, and you bring the bankers, and I'll bring this. I we just bring the counter to it, and it's not like it's I'm rushing them to the front lines. You get three actions, and you say, but wait, you get four if you control your whole country. But it's really easy for someone to take one of your provinces away all the time. Yeah. And even the fourth action is still one extra action. The rules try to make it sound exciting. You can move and attack. Yeah, if I can move three spaces and attack, that would be cool. Most games let me do that anyway. <laughs> so, all right. So, the map is beautiful. The pieces are gorgeous. Yes. I don't even want to say gameplay is bad. Because I'm thinking that there are some people who would enjoy this. Yes. I think so too. Um, I mean, maybe the theme of this shouldn't be so much balance of power, but it's like global Cold War. Because Cold Wars erupted all over our map. Uh, as far as uh, right. just being at an impasse. Okay, well, we're, we're kind of stuck. My guys don't kill your guys, your guys don't kill my guys. So we're just going to sit here and hold the line. And that's pretty cool. Um, and it actually was helping me a little bit do better than everybody else. But you can't else. make an all-out attack. No, you can't. There's you no can't, exciting attacking. You can't launch a Blitzkrieg. You can't do anything like that. No air raids, no nothing. It's just um, we're all going to sit here and twiddle our thumbs, much like um, a lot of World War One, I, I guess, with the trench warfare. You just sat there and twiddled ah, your thumbs until somebody said. So this is an accurate said, game. Yeah, okay. There you go. <laughs> wow. It's an act Here's my thing. This is, this is risk for chess players. Hmm. If a bunch of chess players, and you're like, let's play rest, they're like, oh, is that where you chuck lots of dice? Well, no. <laughs> Not at all. There's no dice. We sucked the fun out of that game. <laughs> and that's where this game falls for me, too. It's just, I like a big battle. Deterministic combat can be fun. Can be. I like a little bit of luck in my battles, but this game has no luck. Again, it's too balanced. For me. For me. So I'm... As much as I would like to like this game, I'm going to have to give it just one, because I'm not going to say it's horrible, but I'm going to give it one hat down. And they should have made the, given the bankers a hat. Yeah, probably so. Um, look, I, I love strategy, I love tactics, I love all that, but there has to be some hope there. There has to be some... Stealing my thunder over there. Sorry. Um, there has to be some aspect of this might not work, but it might work, and it's just not here. I want I want my banker to be able to take out a king every once in a while. I want um, you know this guy to be able to win, even though he shouldn't be able to win. And this doesn't have that. You will never you know a banker will never win against um, what's the other guy? The uh, the, the king, disc. the general, the banker. The, bank, yeah. the, the banker was the disc. That's what's right. confusing. I mean, it's just some guys will never win, and I just. But you can replicate like Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, that didn't make any sense either. Mm -mm. Bankers get together with other bankers and have baby bankers <laughs> at banker conventions. <laughs> All right. So, what did you give this down? Up? I haven't. I haven't said anything, I'm going to say I'm going to give this two monocles down. Ooh, two there's a, down. There's a dude with a monocle right here. I so. need a monocle. Um, I wish uh, I'd, I'd had two monocles. I, 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 and, and please, let me say this. I was actually doing well in the game that we played. Yes, he, I was, was, he was winning, but he was winning at the slowest pace I've ever seen anyone win. Yes, exactly. So it's not because I wasn't winning that I don't like the game. I just don't like the game. There you have it. Balance! Balance. Balance. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at Funagain.com.